here presenting today. Um, so like he said, I'm presenting on the media's role in the O.J. Simpson case. Uh, the O.J. Simpson case is kind of something that, although I wasn't born, people were there during the time. They can, uh, they can always point out where they're at during the case and when it happened. So diving into it, just a little background. Um, on June 13, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and friend Rod Goldman were found murdered at Nicole's home in Los Angeles. Um, OJ claimed that he was on a flight to Chicago at the time of the murder. And uh, there was a history of domestic abuse throughout the relationship, which wasn't covered um, in most of the media. So I decided to cover two uh, theoretical uh, communication theories that have to do with media and media coverage. Um, to criticize the New York Times um, and their coverage of the O.J. Simpson investigation. So first, um, media framing, a theory introduced in 1974 by Irving Goffman, and it's the way media and media gatekeepers organize and present the events and the way audience interpret what they're providing. So essentially, media outlets hold the ability to control how their audiences perceive the coverage being provided. One article that I used uh, time and time again in my paper was titled The Spectacle of Race and Gender in the O.J. Simpson Case. And it basically highlights the topics that go unrecognized by the media throughout the case and the coverage. Um, just a quote, it is deeply disturbing but wholly unsurprising that the O.J. Simpson case has been made into a spectacle by white controlled media. The next theory I dove into was hyper coverage. This idea that uh, mass coverage creates a distracting view of the story um, for its viewers, and the Simpson hyper coverage altered the frequency, prominence, and metaphorical context of news for years to come. Um, as we all know, uh, the O.J. Simpson trial became America's most publicized trial um, to date. So the journalistic media frenzy and Simpsonization of the case shaped and potentially distorted the world's um, and the viewing of the audience. Uh, with an average viewing of 5.5 million throughout the 134 day trial, the OJ Simpson case would become the most viewed lawsuit in American history. Now I'm gonna dive into uh, an analysis of a few New York Times articles that were covering the first few days of the OJ Simpson investigation. So just an overall look before I dive into individual articles. Uh, media framing can be proven in all these articles, um, and it definitely deceived the audience's perception, and um, the public's impression of OJ was affected by this coverage. So the first article, titled, OJ Simpson's Ex-Wife Slain at Her Condo in Los Angeles. Um, it was the first article published by the New York Times covering the murders. And it focused more on Nicole's relation to O.J. Simpson rather than identifying the true tragedy, which was her death. Um, and it mentioned Ronald Goldman, who was also murdered only once, as if his death was less significant. Uh, and it overall disregarded the history of abuse in their relationship. So here's a quote from the article. The Simpsons divorced in 1992 after nine years of marriage. In 1989, Mr. Simpson was fined $700 in order to perform community service after pleading no contest to a charge that he beat his wife. That was the last sentence of that article. So everything else had to do with OJ being a Hall of Fame athlete and Nicole's relation to him. Um, it's appalling that the history of abuse uh, was brought forth in such an undemanding manner. Um, if we do not question media framing, we are more likely to accept the message of the media without any thought. And it's a very dangerous practice in a hyper-polarized media environment that is present today.